Alright, welcome back. So I'm going to be going through um, the 2005 Form Beast FRQs today, starting with the first one. So we're going to be looking at... Um, hey, Oliver. So we're going to be Hello. looking at area between two curves and then uh, some volume by cross sections in disk method or shell method. Okay, so really quickly to review. Um, with disk method, um, we typically use this method when we're revolving around the x-axis. So that's a horizontal line. If we wanted to spin an area between two curves about some sort of horizontal line, um, then what we could do is create an infinitely small box um, that would have some change in x, some height, um, which would be my difference in my y values. Um, so that change in my y values would be my r1 minus my r2, where my r1 is my outermost um, function, and r2 is my innermost function. Um, then we'll just move this from our start point to our end point in order to get the area. Uh, so from A to B. Um, we'll do the area of disk 1 minus the area of disk 2, so that's pi r1 squared minus pi r2 squared from our start point to our end point. Okay, um, for shell method we're doing almost the same thing except we're spinning around a uh, vertical line instead. Um, so we've got the same area that we started with last time. We're going to create our box again. That has some width. Um, but then spin that box around our axis of rotation um, to create a cylinder. So kind of like a toilet paper roll. Um, that cylinder, if I unfurled it, so if you were to cut that toilet paper roll and unfurl it, and the volume of that box that we would get if we um, cut it and unfurled it would be, um, I would have some change in x that we went um, for our depth here. Um, I would have a height, which is our difference between the y values again. Um, and I would have a width, which for us is the entire distance around this cylinder. Or 2 pi r, where r is your radius, that's your distance to the axis of rotation from where you are right now. Um, any questions on disk method or shell method? No. Okay, so I'll kind of review, so let's get into one. Okay, so I've got two functions here, f of x and g of x. Um, f is 1 plus sine 2x, and g is e to the x over 2. Um, we've got this region shaded in between them right now. So the first thing we want to do is figure out what the area would be between the two functions. Um, Junho, what do I have to do? Uh, we need to find uh, the the like x value they mm -hmm. found. Okay, we need to find the x value for the bounce. Okay. Um. So how would I find that? Right. So f of x is equal to g of x. Okay. Whenever f of x is equal to g of x. Cool. Um. So this is. I have question one, so we do have a calculator for this. So I'm just going to set these two equal to each other. Okay, so I could say... one plus the sine of 2x um, needs to be equal to e to the x over 2. And we'll graph that to see what it will look like for now. All 
Okay, so it's a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and hit zoom box, and, and we'll zoom into a box here. Just to see what's going on. Okay, so there's our two intersection points we need. I'm just going to hit second calculate intersect. It's going to ask me for a first curve, I'm going to hit enter, second curve, hit enter, and then guess. Um, I'm going to move the cursor over so I'm a little bit closer to this intersect, and hit enter. And it should give us this intersection here. Okay, which I'm going to store in the calculator, so second quit, and we'll do x store as alpha b because of the second intersect. Um, so our second intersect was 1.135-ish, 1.136. Um, and then our first intersect, I'm going to go back, looks like it's zero, but I'm just going to confirm. Second, calculate an intersect. Um, so this is first curve, second curve, and I'm going to guess zero and see what happens. Okay, that intersection is zero. Okay, um, so I've got two intersects, um, one at a equals zero, and one at b equals... This. 1.13569. Okay. Um, so now I've got our intersects. Um, Oliver, what do I need to do next? Um, uh, <coughs> integrate from the two intersects and make uh, and the function x minus the function g of x. Okay, function f of x minus function g of x, that's 1 plus sine of 2x minus e to the x over 2 in terms of x. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and integrate that. Um, I've already got both of these in the calculator, so I'm just going to do um, y1 minus y2 for my integral. So this will be math 9. And I'm going to integrate. So that's variables, y variables, function y1, minus variables, y variables, function y2, in terms of x from 0 to b. We've got 0 0.429. Our answer. Um, any questions so far? No. no. Okay. So for part B, I want to find the volume generated when we revolve R around the x axis. Um, so that means we're spinning around this line. <laughs> okay, if I'm going to revolve around the x axis, um, Junho, am I going to use this method or shell method? Uh, disk. Disk method, okay. Um, Oliver, what would my R1 be? <coughs> my R1? Um, would be uh, G of X. Uh, okay, G of X is going to be my R2, but that's my innermost radius. Okay, and then my R1 oh, is going to be the opposite F one for this one. Um, and we don't need this shifted or anything because our axis is already x equals zero. So, um, what's our formula for the volume, uh, Junho? Um, uh, root, root, root. I'm gonna do this method. So, what's my general form for this method? Root zero zero to D. I'm gonna integrate. You said from zero, zero to, to B. B. Okay, so, um, if you say root, I'm gonna write a square root. I think usually. Um, so I can say this oh, is I mean, an integral from I. zero to B. That's just an English thing. So. Um, and then what am I integrating? Uh, so if if of x square 
Y minus minus G over X squared. Okay, you need a constant theta. on the outside here. Uh, pi. Pi, perfect. Okay, so then we just need to sub. So this will be pi times the integral from zero to b of our f of x. That's one plus the sine of two x squared minus e to the x over two squared dx. Okay, and then we're going to plug that in and figure out what our volume is. So for our integral, I've got pi times the integral, math 9, of variables, y variables, function y1 squared, minus variables, y variables, function y2 squared, um, in terms of x from 0 to b. Okay, so that's 4.266. Or I'm going to say 6.7, so that last one was a 5. Okay, um, any questions on B? No. Okay, for part C. Um, I'm looking for... Um, a volume by cross-section is where r is the base of a solid. Our cross-sections are perpendicular to the x-axis and are semicircles with diameters extending from f of x to g of x. Okay, so if my diameters go from f of x to g of x, my picture looks like this. So I'm going to have a shape that looks like this popping out of the page. Try to draw that again. So. Okay, so something like this. Okay, we're going to have a width that is infinitely small of dx. We've got our diameter here that we said was f of x minus g of x. Okay, for volume by cross sections, um, any volume um, is really just an area times height. So what's the area of each 2D cross-section right now? Um, what's the shape? Rectangle. Rectangle, not a rectangle. I'm going to try to draw again. So we said cross sections perpendicular to the x axis are which, which shape? Uh, semicircle. Semicircles? Okay, mm. what's the area of a semicircle? Pi r squared. Pi r squared is a Over circle. Two. Okay, divided by two is a semicircle. So a semicircle just means half of a circle. Um, now I was told my diameter is from f of x to g of x. So if my diameter is f minus g, then what is my radius? Uh, top minus bottom is my diameter. Divided by 2. Right. Okay, um, so we just need to plug this in and we'll be okay. 
So if our volume is the integral from our start point to our end point of our area times our change in x, then I could say our volume is the integral from 0 to b of pi times do pi over 2, because that over 2 is, can be part of the constant I pull out too. So this would be pi over 2 times r squared dx. And then r is fx minus g of over 2. So this is pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to b of our top function. 1 plus sine 2x minus our bottom function over 2 and then square it. Okay, we can plug that in. So that gives us pi over 2 times math 9. Um, I'm going to do f of x minus g of x over 2 squared. So I just threw an extra parenthesis in there. This is variables, y variables, function y1 is f of x, minus variables, y variables, function y2 is g of x. Um, and then I need to divide all of that by 2. I actually need one more parenthesis here, I think. So, so I can insert an extra parenthesis that way I don't overwrite. So I'm going to close the first parenthesis divide by 2, close that, and then square it. Okay, I'm doing that in terms of x from a, which is 0, to b. It's the intersect we have stored. Okay, which gives us 0 0.078 for our volume. Okay, um, any Thank questions you. on anything from today? No. Okay, um, so we've got two more for your response questions that are due. Um, please check your WeChats um, if you haven't already to see the assignments that you're missing. Uh, Junho, I think I've got everything yep. back from you already. Um, yep. Oliver, I think I'm still waiting on uh, rates of change and maybe one more. I can't remember. Okay. Okay. So, thank you very much. Um, I've got the free response questions up on Skype and WeChat already. So you guys will be doing two and three before the next class, and I will see you on Wednesday. Two and three. Okay. Yo. Bye. Bye.